Hi everybody, Honest John here. Uh, you know, I, I, you watch the news and the newscasters, uh, the talking heads, they're saying that Donald Trump is living in a fantasy land that uh, he thinks that he can overturn the results of the election. Actually, Trump knows he's lost and uh, he's given up on it even though he will go through the motions, but he knows that Joe Biden is going to be inaugurated as president January 20th. And the way you can tell that is because of the things that Trump is doing that are designed to make things as difficult as possible for Biden. Uh, you know, he, he simply has stopped paying attention to the uh, coronavirus. He is uh, uh, withdrawing troops from Iraq and Syria and Afghanistan with no rhyme or reason. Uh, and of course he will resist any attempt to uh, boost the economy or uh, anything like that because he wants things to be bad for Joe Biden. If Trump thought that he was still going to be president after January 20th, he would not be trying to damage the country like he is. But this is another example of Trump putting his own selfish self-interest ahead of the needs of the country. He'll probably do a few more favors for, Vlad for Vladimir Putin before he leaves office. One of the things that Trump is trying to do is ratchet up tensions in the Middle East. It is not a coincidence that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visited Israel shortly before they assassinated a, an Iranian nuclear physicist uh, in Iran. This was a criminal act. It was an act of war. And it was designed by Trump and Netanyahu to ratchet up tensions in the Middle East between Iran and Israel. What they're trying to do is provoke a response from Iran that would provide an excuse for Israel and the United States to take military action against Iran, perhaps starting a war. Joe Biden has clearly stated that he wants the U.S. to rejoin the Iran nuclear deal that Trump violated and possibly improve relations with Iran. Trump and Netanyahu are plotting to make that more difficult if not impossible. Now I'm no fan of Iran. Uh, matter of fact, any theocratic government to my mind is just something that can't be trusted. But don't forget, Iran was in full compliance with the nuclear deal. It was the United States under Trump that broke its word. And I, and I also have to concede that what Israel did by assassinating an Iranian citizen on Iran soil was a criminal act and an act of war. And Iran has every right to retaliate against Israel. I hope they won't, but that's probably a vain hope. Uh, Iranian politics uh, makes it very difficult for the Iranians just to look the other way at this incident. But what Iran should do is wait until Trump is gone to do anything. With Biden in the White House, whatever retaliation Iran does take against Israel, will not be used as an excuse for a full-scale war. Also, Netanyahu will not be able to count on U.S. support for any action he might want to take. In fact, Biden will most likely put pressure on Netanyahu to stop provoking the Iranians and the Palestinians as well. Biden should make it clear that U.S. support for Israel will no longer be unconditional. 
that Israel is going to have to behave more responsibly. You should also let it be known through back channels that the United States would prefer that Israel choose another leader. In the meantime, Biden will have to deal with the consequences of Trump trying to sabotage the United States before he leaves office. Thanks for listening.